And we are live from the Hopes and Dreams Memorial Studio. It's a lawyer, a musician, and a tree hugger. I'm Jake. I'm Darwin. I'm Lewis. You gotta get that order right. It's a lawyer, a musician, and a tree hugger. Well, a musician goes as, second. As Lewis is the, 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 the surrogate. The new surrogate number. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I want to say we are drinking the Saranac S'more Porter. Tastes exactly like a s'more. I don't like this. It, <laughs> it might be at all. smells a lot like like a s'more. It might like, be a little bit of a rough one, guys. We'll see. We'll see what happens. This but, is uh, disgusting. Whoa! Can we just <laughs> jump right into the beer review? No, 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 no not yet. No, we, we have to finish both of them first yeah. before we this <laughs> before a, we decide on them. This is a disgusting beer. <laughs> Well, I could have poisoned you with the chocolate peanut butter one, so let's not. Uh... <laughs> you could have. All right, I, I wanted fighting it for years. I would have preferred that. <laughs> but on <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, on that somber note, I wanted to kick off things with a uh, little bit of a positive uh, news story I saw today. Uh, so you guys are familiar with the Galapagos Islands? Yes, with, Dar- with, with the. Is, are you talking about the tortoise that has a? Uh, yes. <laughs> had so, so much I would. I'd like, like to read. Uh, the, this the Playboy tortoise tortises. had so much sex he saved his entire species. What a boss! Now he's coming out of retirement. I just want to read some stats on this tortoise for you, if I may. <laughs> his name's Diego, by the way. Oh, Diego, uh, go Diego, go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well done. Darwin, do you have, uh, as our resident environmental scientist, do you have any idea how long tortoises live? It's like 100 years, right? Uh, no. No, no, Eas- easily like 150. 150. Oh, right, well, Crush was a sea turtle, but 150 still young, um, finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Galapagos tortoises can live up to like... It's like 200, yeah, right? 200, if they're like really healthy. I'll see. Um, I where, say on average, it's like 125 to 150. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it within the article. This is a CNN article, by the way. Which, is, <laughs> but uh, he started his campaign of promiscuity when there were just two <laughs> males and twelve females of his species alive on the island. Well, I mean, not much can go wrong with those numbers. Today, the population is over 2,000. <laughs> How can they refer to that as promiscuity? I don't know. It's probably just like a buzzword that they're throwing in. But he was so he was shipped. Like to that th- seems more like an obligation than it seems. Right, right. I think it's just to say that the tortoise had lots of sex. They're trying to make the tortoise. They're definitely they're painting. That has a bad connotation. They're definitely though. painting the tortoise out to be like a playboy womanizing tortoise. <laughs> like those are all. Hugh Hefner. Those are all those words used in this article. He may have just been like, he may have not wanted to do it at all, <laughs> and he may have just done it completely out of obligation. That's probably a, a possibility. Well, well, I mean, most animals they they don't really think about about like looking for a mate it's more of just something that well let's give the tortoise some credit i mean he's over it's like a warm body he is i so i i don't know his exact age but he's over a hundred years old yeah um and he uh yeah so now it's over two thousand is the amount of uh tortoises on the island oh yeah um he believes he's the patriarch of about 40 percent of the population (laughs) of tortoises which Honestly, like, good for the tortoises, but at the same time, that's, like, it could also lead to some disasters in the future. Because, uh, they don't have a very, they have a very narrow gene pool, correct? Uh, so a lot well, of, like... that's true, but that's just because the species of the Galapagos tortoise depends on the island that they're on. It's, like, the same thing with the fish. Okay. See, so I was like just... One island would have, like, a really tall and thick shell mm-hmm. where, where they have the long neck, or one is more, like... A, a smaller neck where they can actually yeah. retract their heads into the shell. See, I was thinking, like, you, you look at a lot of endangered species that are somewhat making a comeback, like leopards you can look at. A lot of them have, like, these really messed up genetic, like, diseases now because uh, of I think inbreeding. cheetahs is, like, one of the big yeah. things. Like, they, Maybe I was thinking of cheetahs, but similar, I, I really same know. same family. Yeah, like, same, same concept. Yeah, but, uh, so, no, this isn't inbreeding, obviously. No, but no, no. I think this leads to inbreeding, no? At least some inbreeding. Or some... It, well, the gene pool is not very large, is my point. It's not. I'd say to an extent, yes. But mm-hmm. once you reach numbers that high, mm-hmm. then I think, like, the amount of inbreeding starts to plateau mm-hmm. and then eventually dip. So I was just going to say, if you think about it, too, um, generally speak, like, 
tortoises are reptiles, right? Yeah. But generally speaking, like, the trend is the longer an animal lives, like, the longer the gestation period and, like, the less babies it's capable of having. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. this thing must have impregnated, like, so many feet. Fe- like, they, it must have just been, like, a machine, basically. Yeah. The machine. <laughs> <laughs> The machine, exactly right. <laughs> so a total of 15 tortoises took part in the breeding program to boost the island's population, but none played a bigger role as Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. The Galapagos Islands are one of the world's premier destinations for wildlife viewing and were visited by Charles Darwin as he worked on his theory of evolution. That was just My that. Boy. That was the... That, <laughs> That was the last paragraph of the article that was just completely unnecessary. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, man, good for Diego, good for the tortoises, good for the Galapagos Islands. Uh, Yeah. So some some uplifting news in this time of... uh, (laughs) of, of, Environmental peril. You know what I heard? I don't... So I don't... I'm not quite sure if... I think this was the Galapagos Islands, but if not the Galapagos Islands, like similar concept Mm -hmm. um i think they're owned by ecuador technically uh i have no clue yeah but either way so uh there were some so the initial like visitors to that island like pirates and shit uh somalian pirates (laughs) no but (laughs) maybe i don't know who knows who discovered america honestly but uh (laughs) they put like goats and like sheep on the island, they introduced those to the islands to like, because they're animals that like they know how to domesticate and kill and like yeah. herd and stuff. So the goats have like completely destroyed like the islands oh, for sure the most they part. Raised like motherfuckers on yeah. those types of islands. So what the Ecuadorian government did was they hired a New Zealand like paramilitary group to come and hunt the goats, <laughs> and they like they literally like declared war on the goats. And Go, so you have Go Team Six. Wait, yeah. <laughs> this happened in Australia too. It was called the Emu Wars. The Emu Wars, I know. Of. Yeah, that was a completely <laughs> different. And the, but what was, was funny was Australia emus. lost the Emu War. <laughs> <laughs> it got beat. Emus, it, emus, emus, emus can be fucking frightening sometimes. Those things are pretty big. Dude, if an ostrich ran at me, well, emus but like an ostrich, right? You can't shoot them. Yeah. Like they couldn't, they physically could not shoot enough of them because they would run away. Yeah, and they couldn't chase. Well, they them would run in like stampedes too, from what I remember. <laughs> they they but, travel uh, in large packs. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they hired this New Zealand paramilitary group. <laughs> I think they killed all like the goats and sheep on the island. So I think that was mission accomplished there. <laughs> so good for them, I guess. <laughs> We fought a hard war out there. It's time to go home to our family. But, but they were, li- <laughs> <laughs> but they were like, I saw like images. They were like flying in helic. It's like that kill streak from one of the Call of Duty games where you get like the sniper sitting out of the helicopter to like pick people off. <laughs> like, I don't know. like bah! tango down. Of all, <laughs> of all the animals to hunt, like. Sheep to me seems like pretty much the easiest. The, the most dangerous game. <laughs> no, like, not not humans, but sheep. <laughs> find me. What, what's an animal you think would be easier to hunt than a sheep? Easier? Yeah. Sloth. Sloth. At least you gotta find. Like sheep yeah, don't I would, blend I would disagree in. Disagree with that because they'd be like in the trees. They're also in what trees. about like cows? Cows but maybe. Cows are, they're bigger. The thing I is, feel like it might take a bit more to. I think I think that mm. was my thought. I think they're very similar, but it would probably take a lot more to kill a cow. Mm-hmm. Also, like, are you with cows? Would there be bulls too? Oh, yeah, because that's, that's then that would make it a lot harder. Right, I'd maybe say like maybe like a llama. Really? I mean, they're not like super big. I feel like they move they're fast. bigger than humans. I mean, a little bit bigger. They're not like. Llamas are weird, dude. They are weird. They're dicks. I saw one. I saw one. I saw one at a farm. You were going to talk about their dicks. Oh no 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 no. So I saw one at a farm a couple. You know, like a a duck. (laughs) I've been spat on by a llama. You know, ducks have. I've been spat on by a llama. Uh, It's horrible. It's horrible. Ducks have corkscrew penises. I thought you were going to go like down that path. No 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 no. They they are they are dicks. I can't comment on the shape of the penis, but they are dicks. <laughs> yeah, no, llam- llamas are assholes. They don't like it when people get up in their business. They'll, they'll kick you. They'll spit on you. 
Yeah, I think and, they have uh, like just like all the negative traits of a horse with like none of the positive <laughs> traits. They're soft. Not as soft as you would hope. This is a really hot take, but horses are just really disgusting animals. Really? Like if you if you I walk disagree. around I if disagree. you walk around in New York City, I can smell a horse from about five so blocks away. So I was away. at well, a horse's shit is different from what? No, but they reek. They just reek like they so smell. I was like, at a, not so in I was, shit. So I was at a ranch uh, on vacation a couple weeks ago, and there are obviously a ton of horses there. Mm-hmm. I definitely see where you're coming from. That being, uh, I guess it depends. Like you're saying, if, to me, if you say a horse is this is a disgusting animal, I thought you were saying that they weren't like beautiful creatures. No, 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 no. no it's like, just you're, I, you're just. I can't be. I can't like be. Hygiene. I can't be in like polite company with a horse. It's just. It's too I, much. You know what? I very much understand that yeah. take. And I think if you, to me the only thing is if you're gonna say a horse is a disgusting animal, then you kind of got to say like a lot of animals are disgusting. Like you yeah. have to have a low threshold. I think. I, I guess. I guess I would. But for example, like. You have a dog, Jake. I mm. can't smell Otis when I walk into the house. So this is the, reminds me of the scene from uh, Pulp Fiction when they're arguing over whether or not a dog is a filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> or, and, like, a, is a pig a filthy animal? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, you know. No, I definitely see where you're coming from. Like, horses yeah. stink. Like, they, they do. do. They do smell. They really, it's, it's, like, it's like when you're around cows, too. It's kind of the same thing. They oh, have, so, like, no... I, I would argue that horses smell worse than cows. They have no qualms about, like hanging out around their own feces and stuff. Oh, like, well, I mean, yeah. most animals don't. Yeah. Mm-mm. It's disgusting. Right. But but also... So uncivilized. <laughs> not to bring back to this, but, like, it, if you've, like, seen a horse's penis, <laughs> it's just bizarrely large compared to its body. I mean, it's just... It's a fifth leg. It's really unnerving to see. <laughs> Makes you feel inadequate. Is that the problem? Perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Like, to me, I just think when it comes to that stuff, I'm always just like it serves like a it's got to serve like some evolutionary purpose. So I don't really like let it bother me in that respect. But I don't know. I, I, I understand like you being uncomfortable. It doesn't. Well, first of all, it doesn't bother your like basal mammalian instincts because humans have such proportionally small dicks. Is that the case compared to other? That's true. Is it not? I don't know. I, re- I really don't know. Okay. I mean, I think it probably has something to do with the fact that we're bipedal. Maybe. Too. And most animals aren't, obviously, but... I don't know. There's always hope for a tripod. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. What advantage does that serve? <laughs> oh, no, no. It, it's situational. It's only the tripod when, when I need it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> But uh, actually, that reminds me. Yeah, it was when I when I went to summer camp. It was like, mm, like eight years ago. Go. Okay. <laughs> I, sure. I don't remember how this came up. This my, is when you're a camper at summer yes, camp. Yes, yes. Okay. I was I was still a, a child. Got it. I was not a counselor at this Got point. Got it. My friend was showing me a picture of an elephant. He was like, "Oh look, like love elephants." It has by five the way. legs. I'm like, I've never heard of an elephant with five legs. <laughs> and you take a closer look, like one's like. See to me, it's I not thought gray. <laughs> see, see, my interpretation of that would have been to look at the trunk, initially. Oh no, but you can see the trunk, like it, like it comes from. It's like the but, nose. But there, but there are like there, there are five legs in the picture. <laughs> right, because I think it's because they walk on all fours. I think that's the reason. Uh, but, well, yeah. I don't know. That is really weird. That that but, but like, is what you were guys were discussing at camp, but. <laughs> I where do you get? I, I don't where do you know, get that photograph? I don't know how it came up. But was I, it a photograph or was it like on the it phone? Was, it or? was like a photo on the phone. Okay, it wasn't like he took a picture of the. Got elephant. it. Got it. Got it. Got like it. oh, went to like a <laughs> one went later. to like a one hour photo finishing place and got it printed out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess on a more serious <laughs> no- on a more serious note, uh, I don't know how you get more serious than animal dicks, but. <laughs> I just saw the movie 1917 last night. Uh, really liked it. Really good movie. Not as many uh, animal decks as you hoped? Not as many. Actually, exactly as many as I hoped. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Uh, maybe, maybe I, all right. one. There maybe were one. some dead horses and dead animals in the movie. Whoa, I didn't so know you were into that. Not, <laughs> not going to lie. But, uh, <laughs> Whoa. But, um, yeah. Uh, so, there, I heard some people saying they thought it was, like, the best movie ever. Or like an instant classic. I don't know about that, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought 
the cinematography of the movie was really interesting. So it was just, uh, I'm definitely going to use the wrong like terminology here, but it was two takes, like the whole thing was done in. Mm -hmm. Like the camera only cut once. Really? There were only, it was two just like continuous shots. The, that was the entire movie. Wow. So uh, I think that added like a uh, somewhat of like a real feeling. Yeah. I don't know if you guys really know what the plot was about. But basically, there's, like, one, like, division of British troops, and there's another division, like, a few miles away in, like, a couple towns over, and they're about to attack the Germans, and there was some aerial reconnaissance that uh, the first division did, that if the other division attacks, they're going to be massacred, like, they're walking into a trap, basically. So this uh, one guy is a sign or two guys are assigned uh by the general to deliver the orders to go k call off the attack basically okay um and one guy's uh the reason the two guys were selected is because one guy's brother is or has a brother in that division mm -hmm. just to add like some incentive for him to get there quickly yeah so he has to like traverse no man they have to traverse no man's land and basically like cross enemy lines in order to deliver this message so it's really just like a harrowing experience for them um where i thought they were gonna go is to kind of focus on like the brutality of world war one yeah um i don't think i don't necessarily think that's the route they went i think what they went for and i appreciated this was more of a uh route of it showing the futility of world war one yeah like they were really only fighting of a over a stretch of a few miles in like countries that's not even their own because mm -hmm. the whole thing is shown from the perspective of the british and the germans so okay uh there were a lot of rats in this movie hmm. that sh and like ravens and crows and stuff that just showed how gross and disgusting the trenches were oh <sighs> sure yeah and uh i can't even imagine yeah what was awesome was um or what was very well done, I thought, was you had different areas of the trenches. You had, like, the areas where basically you were safe. And then you had the front lines. And as you cross over, you see just the mood shift, slight shifts in, like, coloring, and just the expressions on the men's faces. I thought it was very uh, well directed in that aspect of it. Um, it's definitely not, like, an action film. I yeah if that's what you're looking for I wouldn't recommend it in that regard. There was good action at times, but where I thought it was a very good collection of individual incredible performances. I like for example, I thought that was kind of encapsulated by Benedict Cumberbatch's character. He was only he plays the commander who uh is going to order his troops to die basically. Um he's only he only has one scene it's only a couple minutes that he's in the movie, but he, like, was amazing in that one scene. And I think it's filled with little performances like that that really enhance these two characters that we've following throughout the movie. So, uh, I would definitely recommend. I thought it was a really good uh, period piece. Um, and, yeah, it was a good movie overall. If you're a fan, if you're a fan of history, if you want to know a little bit more about World War One, I, I think it's definitely a good movie for you to see. All right. There's my review. So I, out of 10, what do you think you would give it? It's a good question. Um, I see a lot of people giving it like 9s and 10s. I don't think it's that good. But I might give it an 8, which for me is pretty, pretty high. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. I think I'd give it an 8. All right. I thought it was a, some interesting choices made. And I think the whole thing... Um, was directed by and directed and produced i might have this wrong of a like a grandson or like maybe a great grandson of a guy who fought in world war one and uh at the end they dedicated the movie to the, that guy mm -hmm. and like thanked him for like telling them all the stories about world war one I. I thought that was really interesting and uh, it was some unconventional uh risks and choices in style that i thought really worked for this movie all right yeah 
You heard it here, folks. 1917. Pretty good movie. I actually heard about it listening to the Daily. Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah, well, that. I was going to say, I'm also like... <laughs> I'm also like a big history guy in addition to being a big movie guy. So like from that perspective, maybe it's a little skewed, but I really enjoyed it as a history guy. All right. Well, I, I was looking at it. I was hoping I could see it. Uh, did it come out this Friday? Like last Friday? I think it just came out. I don't know when it came out. We kind of went to see it on a whim. And we yeah. went to like the 10 p.m. showing after. Uh, That's pretty nice though, low key. Like. It was. There were way more people there than I thought there would be. Really? But uh, interestingly enough, uh, a couple friends and I had just come from a mead tasting. Oh, some mead, some nice mead. I really do like mead. Do it's, you really? It's good. Did, there's there's one. So, there's a meadery in the Milburn Mall. Did I tell you is? about wait, this? Wait for real. In the it's Milburn the only one. Mall, like where like Five Guys is. Yes. Okay. And you have to go behind. You have to go behind the actual building. There's a back parking lot. Yeah, you, you seriously know, think I you're gonna you're get t- killed? I know what you're talking yeah, about. I was gonna say, that sounds pretty sketchy. It, you think it's really sketchy, and it's like there's only, like a barber shop or something around there, right? There's like a barber shop, and then you go all the way to the back, and it's just like a um, a metal door that's like kind of rusty, and it has like a flag that's doing a great job selling it so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and then it, it feels like you're back in Milbury. <laughs> yeah, well, it has a flag. It says Melavino, which is the name of this meter. It's the okay. only one in New Jersey, oh, yeah. and you go in. And you're like, oh, I'm in Brooklyn. <laughs> like this, you walk in, you're like, oh, okay. I know where I am. <laughs> Which is a good thing now. <laughs> Brooklyn is not a bad place. <laughs> exactly. I've been there many times. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, um, yeah, we. so what we all got were, I'd never had mead before. So what we all got were these, um, like the first timer flights is what they had. So it's like five meads to sample. It was four traditional meads um, and one like session mead, which is kind of like the thing that's in vogue now. Like, is it kind of like an IPA? It's not. No, nah, it's more. Kinda? It's more like a beer. I think it was only five and a half percent. A session but, is a low alcohol drink that you can, yeah, so have over time. It ah. was really more of like a, uh, like fruity or like good so, drink just uh, kind of in the style so of you mead. would equate it more to like a fine wine but with a lower alcohol content kind of. no not at all well no i don't mean like it is wine but as in like no, in no, terms no, no. Of i understand would i would not equate it to that okay. i would equate well what i had i would equate to like a mike's hard just as like mead <laughs> but um okay so the, yeah i would honestly the traditional meads like I see where people like them. It wasn't really for me. I don't think with the traditional ones, they're ve- they are very high alcohol content. They're like tw- it's basically the they, same as a glass of wine. They get you drunk pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fruitiness, I, the fruits I found like they were very well made. Like they tasted authentic to me. But they were well mead. Yeah, <laughs> well, oh god. Oh god. Well <laughs> met. <laughs> but I was gonna say. Uh, the fruitiness was a little like overbearing to me vomit. <laughs> yeah it was a little overbearing to me okay. but the session one that i had i had one over burying <laughs> quit while you're behind <laughs> i had one it's called... not gonna end up so well for you lewis if you keep doing this i had one called the uh until i cope with the spear <laughs> <laughs> so bad i had one called the tea tax and it was basically like an arnold palmer mead Ooh, awesome! That, that sounds really good. It was really good. Definitely nowhere near being like an authentic mead, I think. But it tasted. Uh, it, all- it's like some home brewer's like little spin on it. It tasted fantastic, and it was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was in Allentown, PA. I forget the name of the place, but I'm pretty sure it's like the only meadery in Allentown, and it was cool because they had it was a meadery a brewery and a distillery all in one like complex Ooh. we didn't really get to hit up any of the other places because we went pretty late but yeah we went there and then we went to 1917 so. <laughs> nice yeah so you know what i can check that off my bucket list had a nice autumnal mead with a great mouth feel, as they say. <laughs> a great mouth feel. <laughs> Superb yeah. mouth feel. My dad and I always argue over those Bud Light commercials with, like, the king. With the 
king and then the one Bud Light king and then like yeah. the Pomplemousse is the other king. <laughs> we always argue over so my dad thinks that Pomplemousse, the guest, is uh like the a beer snob. <laughs> he, that's what he refers to him as the beer snob <laughs> the king. Beer snob. I think the Bud Light King is the beer snob. Like he refuses, I mean, he refuses to have anything that isn't Bud Light. Yeah, considering he's literally a walking advertisement for Bud Light, it sounds like he he's is a like, beer he's snob. Like the, he's snob. He's a pompous little, he's Pompa, the pompous one. Pompa Moose comes <laughs> over to his castle and offers him like mead, and he's like, "All right, fine, Pompa Moose. Since you are my guest, I will." try your mead i, I will he, i will appease you yeah and he can't even like he can't even bring himself to taste he's like you know what, you know what? i can't i can't do it this, i can't do it this isn't good enough for and me. then he, and then you know what I need? and then he's like all right bud i'll light. have and then, bud he, light. <laughs> and then he goes i'll have a bud light and then the king just and the pompal moose just goes but i don't like bud light and then he like throws him out of the castle because he doesn't like bud light <laughs> bud light by the way no good at least in my opinion <laughs> Which which is exemplified by the recent Bud Light seltzer ads. I don't know if you've seen those. Wait, what? Bud, Bud Light's Light coming seltzer? out with the seltzer. Like, yes, hard seltzer. Oh, they switch. gotta follow the hard seltzer trend now. Well, it's yeah. de- they're actually making a big thing about it. Like it's debuting tomorrow, I think. Or hmm. no, 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 it's debuting like the fifteenth or well, something. Are like they actually going for like seltzer or is it like beer flavored seltzer? Which well, would be no, 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 trash. no, no, no. So <laughs> in the so ads, at least they basically have basically Bud Light. Yeah, well, beer flavor well, seltzer. Of course, say. it's in seltzer form. Well, that's the thing I was gonna say. In ads, they have like black cherry flavor and stuff. So, oh. the, well, the guy's trying to like sell it. Uh, the guy in the ad is the mayor of Seltzer, Pennsylvania, and he's trying to like sell the the uh, Bud Light seltzer. And he's like, if you like Bud Light, you'll love this product. If you don't like Bud Light, there's no Bud Light in it, so you'll love it. And I'm just like, all right, it's a really ringing endorsement of your product there for me, at least. I feel like it, it would not be worth it to, to produce that, like on, for for Bud Light. In terms of, I don't think they're gonna get much of a profit out of it, considering you know you've got White Claw and Truly and well, all those other hard seltzer. So what I would do is already leading. It. What I would do is look and see how Natty Seltzer's doing, because they have a seltzer that's too. A, see, I haven't heard of it yet. It's been a thing for a while. Okay, if, um, so if that's any indication of. Of how common these if, things if, are. If Natty Seltzer's doing well, I have to imagine that Bud Light Seltzer would do well. It. I will give Bud Light Seltzer this. They are kind of like marketing it kind of like in the same type of can White Claws in. So it does kind of look like a more high-end like, like product. Like a taller, thinner can. To me, this seems like a weird time to be debuting it, though. Because aren't these things like most popular in the summer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know. maybe they're I trying mean, to break for in. college girls. It's all year round, baby. <laughs> I think they were trying to capitalize on like football and the playoffs and stuff. But that too. I mean, like we'll see. I mean, I would say like what, two two years ago maybe is when like I had first thought that white claws were starting to like come up. Right, right, Because right. like I don't know, one, like every girl was drinking it at a party that I went to or a pregame. But like, fast hey, forward, I, I I drink no, white claws. No, but, no, but I'm saying like fast forward to like a year, year and a half later, and like literally everyone's drinking white claws. Like one of my good friends at school, this this British guy I once knew. <laughs> Let me <laughs> say one of my <laughs> friends, <laughs> but this British guy I once knew. Guy I once knew. No, no, I still know him. He's not dead. Okay. Um, I'm I'm still. In He's touch British with him. though. He is he British. Still though. is British though. I met him my freshman year in orientation, and I got along with him just because he's he's British and he likes sports. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, like literally every time that I would go to his place for a beer game, he's like, mm-hmm. "Yo, I <laughs> I brought a, a six pack of White Claws, mate." <laughs> yeah, I will say, um, switching gears here a little bit. And speaking of things that like. We've been getting into late, I think. Uh, Rocket League, I just started playing. Dude, really? so much fun. It, it is a lot so of fun. So much fun. I haven't played it in, like, I say I saw it, like, three years. Well, one of my college friends just downloaded it, and it's, like, cross-platform. Yep. Yeah, so we totally started... Totally cross-platform. So we started playing a little bit. It's, like, I, I suck at it, but it's no, fun. It's like, a lot of fun, even if you suck at it, because, like, there are still those moments where you're like, oh, shit, I kind of have a little feel for this. Yeah, and when you score, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, Lewis, you know Rocket League? No. So Rocket basically League? all yeah, it is it? basically all it is is it's this game where it's like you're in like cars and there's a ball that's like as big it's as like your a car. It's like a giant soccer ball. Yeah, and you're just playing <laughs> soccer with the cars, like ramming it into the ball and trying to score. <laughs> it's so much fun, dude. It's, it's a it's, lot of fun. My, it's uh, cool. Yeah. Well, I, so I will say I'm like 
I like soccer. Darwin, I know you obviously like soccer. Yeah. Um, as someone who likes soccer, I think it's a really fun game, but I have plenty... The people I was playing with it, I know aren't soccer fans, and they love the game too, so I think it, like, crosses that boundary. Yeah, no, I would say just as a game, like, it's really fun, regardless of if it's... It, I don't even know if it's really considered a sports game. I it definitely... I mean, so it's, when it's I, esports, when I like, it, it, when I Googled it, it... Esports When I Googled it, it is considered a sports game. Okay. But uh, there are other modes too, right, that, like, aren't soccer? Uh, there, there's a basketball mode. I know that. Okay. Where, like, there's an actual hoop that you have to get it in. Yeah. Uh, but but there's, like, a little ramp going up. One thing so, like, also, I right, love the game like... mode that's... I love the pun. It's spelled S-O-C-C-A-R. Sock-car. Sock-car. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're in little cars, dude. Yeah, my my uh, my uh college roommate from, from this last year, his little sister is actually, like, part of a legit esports team. Is she really? Oh my she, jo- she joined it like two weeks ago. Like I'm not lying. She's apparently like my roommate was good at this game. I, I guess she's which, even better. Which game was it? What Rocket League? Oh, it was Rocket League. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's literally like grandmasters, like up there with like so, the pros that you would see at a so. I was gonna game. ask with like esports. I watched like some stuff and I like kind of know how it works, but like, mm-hmm. is it? Are you like there? Are, teams or like franchises and you're like relegated in is that how it works or yeah basically i mean like teams will have tryouts to see if someone wants to join or is it like um, each team gets a spot and the players are different each time i don't really know how it works in terms of that i think it's just like if if their players are not good enough mm-hmm. then the team would be yeah. included in the tournament Right. I don't. I don't really know. So I was kind of. So thing. I got kind of interested in the business side of it because Lewis. I just found this out. Uh, Rick Fox actually owns an esports franchise. I think he just sold it actually, but he he, he did own one. Uh, and he like <laughs> think he made a lot of money off. Of it. I'm sure he did, dude. Yeah. E- esports are fucking huge. Like, um, was there it? was some crazy stat. Like more people watched the Fortnite World Cup than like yeah. yeah that's that's a thing. My, my uncle. Yeah. My uncle had to go to it. I, for, for his business. The seats for it were hot, I heard. Yeah. No, like, people pay, like, thousands to go to that event. And, like, in terms of worldwide, there's, there's literally, like, like dozens you know of millions of people I was going to say, though? That's crazy. It's Certain insane. games, to me, don't seem that fun to watch, but Rocket League, professionally, seems like it would be fun to Rocket watch. Rocket League is fun. Um, Overwatch is also pretty fun to watch. I think it like is totally up to like the person. Oh, like, 100%. What their preferences but are. luckily it's happening everywhere. Yeah, like I've seen um, um Counter-Strike is also a good one to watch. Yeah, so I saw I've of the professional stuff I've seen Counter-Strike was one of them. I thought it was like kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. To me it was like I don't know, like, they kept kind of doing the same thing over and over again, and to me, that's, like, when professional gaming kind of gets boring, when there's only, like, one way to win. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah, which is why I think, like, balancing... Well... Yeah. Uh, one thing that I got super into while I was in college was Super Smash Bros. Oh, like, right, I mean, that's, like, we all know that. I Well, no, like, I became really good at the game only because I watched so much competitive, and, like, it's yeah. basically just looking over that stuff, like... Yeah. Watching it just because it's exciting, yeah. and afterwards being like, I want to do this shit. So I'll just hop on my GameCube, and like, if I have time, I'll be on there for like, like two or three so hours. So I remember just, uh, just like playing a computer or playing with my roommates. So I remember, practicing. Lewis, you and I did a Smash set for some people. Uh, I think last week, yes. but uh, we were talking about how. Uh, so I like to play as Bayonetta in this game and the previous game. Mm-hmm. Um and like everybody gives me shit because she's like well in one game well, she's really overpowered she was broken in the, the one for the Wii U yeah and the other one in the newest that one count. she's no, like it doesn't. I, in I the newest count. one she's like nerfed a lot yeah she's, she's I okay. play I play as her because like I enjoy her as a character and I actually like know her like powers and stuff Did from you play the I played games? the Bayonetta games oh, okay so. Like, I have no conception of her being good or bad. Like, I use her independently. You use her because she's Bayonetta. The, like, yeah, so people were giving me shit, and it was like, oh, she's so overpowered. I'm like, dude, at the level we're playing at, like, it really it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. We're not good enough to, like, have a character be overpowered. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. 
No, it's ridiculous when you're playing casual, just be like, oh, I need to pick the character that has like the least number of frames for every move before it comes out. Which one? Hit yeah. box. Yeah, whichever one is the smallest hit yeah. box. Go, for, go with fucking Pichu, then things tiny shit. Although I will say, I will give people this, that in... Um, I always get the names of the games, but Brawl, Meta Knight was... Was Meta Knight was broken. I will give you He was single-handedly the best character in that game, bar none. Like... No, and no they couldn't base. send an update to nerf it. Because well, the whole thing was his... Well, if I remember his, correctly, his, his priority his, was ridiculous. His, the attack was, like, super broken. It would do a bunch of damage, come out, like... It was, like, the fifth frame. So, like, for every single second, there are 60 frames. So it would be, like, you know... A, a, let's say a three-frame move. Like, he had priority it, so over everything. After the yeah. input for you to actually get hit. So, like... <laughs> That's literally like no time at all. <laughs> Lewis just learned about forever. input lag, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I experienced it I, for the first time. <laughs> uh, I, I, have I learned, knew what it was. I pretty much learned like all the ins and outs for, at the very least, uh, like Melee and Brawl, and not Brawl, and uh, Smash Ultimate. For like, no, no, I wouldn't say I know all the frame data and stuff, but I have so, a pretty good grasp on everything. So I was just going to say, on the... So on the uh, Firmly <laughs> grasp it. In your hand. <laughs> just like Lewis is doing in that beer right now. That he allegedly hates. I think he might break it in anger. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I guess staying on the video game front, one thing I wanted to talk about was, um, so there's been a lot of rumors, I think I mentioned this before, uh, about a new Arkham game. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing, like, confirmed yet, but we have been getting some, uh, so, like, whenever there's a new Batman game coming out, the producer always sends us, like, cryptic images and stuff. A lot of video game companies do, but yeah. I think Batman... Been, like, Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's. Like, yeah, Batman people, I think, generally do, like, a very good job with this for, like, all their media. Like, the Dark Knight promos, like, they literally created an entire, like, world. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was... In- Go back and, like, Google some of that. It's insane. But, uh, basically... Oh, they've been posting new images, and they've been releasing new stuff, um, but I think staying in that universe, one, like, quick topic I wanted to bring up was about, uh, Superman, and how, like, he doesn't really get any video games ever, because creating a Superman video game is, like, basically impossible, Mm -hmm. because essentially what it boils down to is he's either too overpowered where the game isn't fun, or he's so underpowered, like, you basically created a different character at this point. So, mm. I think the only real... There's only two kind of accepted ways to do it, kind of, in fighting games, like Injustice, where you kind of just suspend your disbelief for the fun of the game, where... it's Like, like Smash, for example. Like, I firmly believe that Bayonetta would pretty much obliterate any of those characters <laughs> if she came into contact with them. But, uh, like, for the fun of the game, that's just not what happens. Yeah. Or do, like, a telltale story where it's basically just, like, a game on... It's more of, like, a movie where you're just kind of, like, interacting with it versus, like, a real video game. So I kind of thought, like... Those games are so frustrating. Sometimes they're really fun. I think it depends. On, like, the, the Batman one they did, I thought was fun. The, uh... Walking Dead one, I, I heard, got a lot of praise. I heard it was pretty good. I heard it was good. But, uh, I don't know. I, know, I remember you had, like, L.A. No Weir back in the day. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's How was that? It didn't feel like a movie, per se, because there was so, it was it was very open world. So oh, it, it was? It wasn't, okay. it wasn't like a game on rails. It, it, okay. You had sort of objectives, and I guess the more movie-like elements of it were when you would interview people. Or question them and interrogate yeah. them and try to read their their cues. Yeah. And then what was interesting is the game would respond in real time to whatever decisions you made. Yeah, I remember that. And then if you, if you screwed up, the whole sequence of actions in the game mm-hmm. would be screwed up Yeah. for the rest of the mission. So I certainly, like, yeah, so I remember that. And I definitely get the opinion that those types of games, like, don't appeal to everybody. So I think what I tr- so I just want to give you my thoughts on how I would do a Superman game, and you guys tell me if like maybe that's something you'd be interested in doing. Okay. So I don't know like if this is, like superhero games are the type of games you guys play to begin with. It seems more like 
if I know, knowing you guys, you don't really play them, but you'd be open to playing them. Mm -hmm. more, I mean, I played like a casual consumer. Was it? I played Infamous. It's not okay. A, I mean, it's, it's kind of a superhero game. I also sort played. Of. Does Halo yeah. count as a I, superhero also, game? No. Pro, I don't know. Have you played Prototype? <laughs> no, but I know it's kind of like Infamous, right? Yeah. Okay. It's almost similar, except you have like. These cool shape shifting powers. Where right. You turn like your limbs. Into, like, yeah, I know of it. I just shit. never played it. Uh, it was pretty dope. I actually. So liked that a lot. the way I imagine a Superman game going is it would have to be like really, really interactive. Like you have to be able to interact with the entire environment. I would make it open world. Um, and there would have to be like a lot of controls basically to be able to interact with all of Superman's abilities. I would make it kind of like a, uh, almost like a Dark Souls type game. I would make it difficult and I would make it no mob enemies, just bosses. Okay. Is the way I would do it. Mm. And this is like the plot to me that I thought of was very, um, actually kind of similar to Arkham Origins, which is like, makes me a little apprehensive, but basically the idea is, a villain in town i don't really want it to be lex luther i want it to be just somebody else you can like make up somebody for this just basically puts like a bounty on superman mm -hmm. like an insane amount of money and you have like one like day or night or like one week we'll call it to kill him and if you do you get like a hundred billion dollars or something <laughs> and so obviously what's gonna happen is like villains are gonna start to like uh, put innocent people in danger to draw out Superman so they could, like, fight him. Okay. So I would make it so you could fight whomever you want, like, in any order you want, and it would be a bunch of different types of uh, challenges to Superman. So there are a lot of different characters who I thought of for this. The first one I thought of uh, would be Lobo. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I haven't heard of him. So he's basically kind of like a parody of Superman, Almost, he's a uh, he's a bounty hunter, so it'd be like perfect for his <laughs> characterization. He's essentially as strong as Superman. He's kind of like just Deadpool, but on steroids. <laughs> Deadpool, if Deadpool was as strong as Superman, okay. And wow. like, he acts kind of like insane, like Deadpool, but he's like highly intelligent. Yeah. Um, and he has like technology that can harm superman also so he to me seemed like an obvious choice right at the get-go um other enemy like other bosses that i thought would be cool would be like uh like i thought of deathstroke for actually is one of them cool. now deathstroke can't really harm superman no <laughs> but so there's a couple there's one really famous scene in comics that i really like that i like to recreate where uh Deathstroke is able to like hold off Superman briefly by like uh making Superman believe that he has kryptonite bullets in his gun even though he doesn't. Uh, a little bluff. Yeah, so have like the lead-based gun so x-ray vision can't go through it because mm -hmm. lead's uh. actually kind of a weakness for Superman. <laughs> but, um not really a weakness, but he just can't like see through it's, it. Yeah, it's yeah. more just a uh... It's kind of like, it's, a, it's the same thing as magic. Like, Superman, like, people say it's a weakness for him. It's not. Like, mm -hmm. he's not weak to magic. He's just not immune to it. Like, he's vulnerable to magic. Yeah. But it, he's not, like, any more weaker to it than an average person is. But, uh, basically, the idea I had with Deathstroke is he kind of, like, holds that bluff and he, like, it's just kind of like a diversion. Like, he sets off bombs throughout the city or something like that. Mm -hmm. And in, like, as Superman's trying to do with that, I'd imagine Deathstroke would have, like, some enchanted sword that he stole or, like, killed somebody for and be able to, like, harm Superman with that. Mm -hmm. So, like, you kind of have to think on your feet more so than just, like, straight up beating the crap out of somebody like you probably would with Lobo. Okay. Yeah. Other characters I thought of are, like, Parasite. He's a Superman villain who can basically, like... He's kind of just, like, Android 16... Like, he can just drain yeah, the just drain, energy. Yeah, drain, like, the life from people. Yeah. So, like, that would be, like, a much more tactical fight, even though you could beat him. Um, another character I thought it would be cool would be Mongol. He'd kind of be, like, to me, like, a Bane character. Like, 
not really in it for the money, just like the chance to kill Superman. Uh, he's a being who's like uh, from a planet that has a red sun. So when he comes to like Earth with the yellow sun, he like gains Gets stronger. He gains like a ton of power. Uh, um, Superman can body him, but it's more just like he has to like go i would say the equivalent of like super saiyan blue to contend with him and then to beat him he'd have to like tap into blue so he'd actually have to like try relatively hard to beat him it was the analogy i would make okay and you have to like i guess limit the damages you can try and control the narrative try to make sure you don't destroy the earth yeah, you know, that, that would that be thing. pretty dope. Um, I wanted to avoid Dark Side at all costs in this game. To me, he's, he's more like a sequel. Yeah, and I think he's like people try kind of like undersell him. Um, but the other like side plot I kind of wanted to have was whoever, whatever villain you kind of have. I kind of wanted to make like a rival to Luthor, mm-hmm. and Luthor would be trying to kill him too. So you'd have to think, like, all right, can I trust Luthor? Can I work together with him? That I would make, like, a plot twist and stuff. Okay. So that's basically, like, my rough outline. Mm-hmm. I think there are, like, ways to do it that would be cool. It would be hard, but I think it's doable. And I would right. make this game difficult, too, is something else I would emphasize. Um, now, would there be, like, a story kind of woven into it? Or is, like, uh, I, is, is there anything that's really driving superman himself to actually like stop luther or, or so the whole idea is it's like well, i understand that it's like putting a bounty on this no, no no no. so the i think the idea is to more just like, him, but, like is there any make people believe in superman i think is the whole point like because they're gonna be kill I, a lot of innocent people would die in this game in my eyes and that would kind of like turn the pu- like entirely because sup- of superman mm-hmm. so, so i that would be like the cutscenes. yeah, like yeah. In between each each boss yeah and i think like i would have like you know how you choose to fight to me would impact that a lot mm-hmm. like how many who dies how many people die like yeah that'd be yeah. cool you get like a little snippet like, of like, like who to you me, did save and like, who you didn't. Like to me, if you wanted to just like body all these guys and use like your ridiculous strength and powers, yeah, you'll win, but you're gonna cause a lot of collateral damage and kill a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So to me that kinda like gets at the essence of what like Superman has to pull his punches a lot to yeah. like be Superman. Especially when he's fighting these like alien threats who are, are like strong like mongol and uh um lobo for yeah. example okay huh. i can get behind that all right do you have do, do you have the uh do you have the know-how to put this together oh me <laughs> No, 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 I'm just thinking more like if... Uh, <laughs> like in theory, as a, as a thought. If w- you have the ability to develop a video if game. If somebody at WB Games is listening, get in, to, get in touch with me. We'll work it out. <laughs> but uh, I also have some ideas for a Superman movie, too. So definitely get in touch with yeah. me on that uh, one. Z- Zack Snyder, get in touch with this man. Wait. Please. They already they already made a movie about Superman. They've made dozens of movies about <laughs> Superman. Speaking yeah. of movies, they've had what like five reboots. Well, of I was gonna like say TV shows. I was gonna say speaking of movies about Superman though, they just showed us the trailer for Superman Red Sun, which I'm super excited about. Ah. The D- DCAU movies, is which that are still like good. Henry Cavill. DCAU. Oh, DCAU. So, which okay. I think are actually like good movies. Ah. Yeah. Do you do you know anything about Superman Red? Basically, nope. so it's basically just like an Else World. Let's be quick. It's basically an Else World story. You're this, watching it right now. No, I'm I'm playing the soundtrack uh, of the yeah. only significant Superman movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say Man of Steel was insignificant. But this was the OG. I agree movie. with that. That movie is considered like one of the best superhero movies of all time, though. <laughs> the original Superman. Oh yeah. Oh, was, that, that one, the one that came out, it was like, what, 1970s? 60s. I think like 64 or something like that. Okay. No, it was the 70s. Oh, was the 70s? Because it was. Because it, was. It, was a, it was a John Williams score. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think people don't realize that at the time, that was the equivalent of making, like, Coca-Cola the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, um... Which, which, like, yeah, to that's me, an idea. Which to, <laughs> <laughs> which to me makes it even more impressive. Coca-Cola polar bear, where you at? <laughs> yeah. I love those ones. Coca-Cola the movie. But, uh, 
basically Superman Red Sun. It's a comic series. It's an Elseworld story of. It's like basically a what if instead of landing in Kansas, Superman landed in Siberia, oh. and became like a Soviet superhero. KBG, KG, Superman, KGB, KGB. I said KBG. Oh wait, did I? Yes. I thought I said KGB. Fully. No. Louis, what, what did you hear? You were wrong. It's fine. KBG. You said KBG. <laughs> I did? Yes. Okay. But either way, well, whatever. you get the concept. Uh, basically, Dusty. instead of fighting... Like KGB. <laughs> instead of fighting for truth, justice, in the American way, I think... I'm trying to remember what, like, the he line is. He fights for the motherland. He fights for, um, like, brotherhood, Bolshevism, and the international expansion of the Warsaw Pact, I think, <laughs> is the line that they replace truth, justice, in the American way with. <laughs> oh, oh, what yes. a great, iconic line. I know. Is it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's kind of like a terrifying thought. Like, what if Superman landed in the Soviet Union? So I will say we still had Green Lantern and Wonder Woman. All right. So I'm I'm just saying. Imagine how fucked up society would be if superpowers were real. Yeah. Well, if but, we had no, that's what I'm. See, that's what I think though. If we had a Superman, it wouldn't be, and people had superpowers, it wouldn't be nearly as bad. Mm-hmm. Or we could just oh. go, like, a My Hero route. Superpowers would be nice to have. <laughs> if everyone had superpowers, though. If everyone had superpowers. It would be, super. like, the season three. Like, <laughs> Nobody like, is. Which is such a stupid No, no that's not... I so hate, true. I don't agree with that. No, that's that. not even where I To me, going. My Hero completely disproves that. If everyone, yeah, had no, super, if everyone had superpowers, it would be absolute mayhem. It would be, like, the that's, season yeah, finale right, of the Big right, Man. No, it would be... Right. That's what it would yeah, be. It would be yeah. absolute... Insa- yeah. It'd be pure just, chaos. Just, just absolute insanity. Like, but to me, that's, like... like to me, the whole... The reason Syndrome's wrong about that whole thing... I don't want to get into an analysis of The Incredibles here, but in his eyes, he doesn't believe... He's kind of like such a hypocrite with that line because he's saying that, well, it's like he's trying to be super. Well, he's saying it's like powers that make you super, but or make you a hero, which is so not the case at all. Mm-hmm. Like we have real life heroes. Like it's being a hero is like a, it's just like an, uh, not attitude, but it's like a set of morals convictions and it's like the it's ability to being. the ability to act yeah it's yeah. a state of being i yeah. think you either just kind of like are or you aren't and and you him, might not always him, be a hero all and the him, time and him yeah. saying that like is like kind of it's reducing heroes to their powers which like is to me is so stupid because he's the one who like basically invented technology to give himself powers yeah. which i guess kind of shows that he misunderstands the whole being a hero thing well it, it it totally tracks with his idea of what super heroes or heroes are does it not Cause, well he i guess it, you know what i guess it does make sense because like, he kind of like consistent. fakes the whole fight with the omni droid to make him seem like a hero yeah so i don't know but he always wanted to be that that person to save the day, but he felt he never could because he didn't have superpowers. Well, I don't and, know and if that's. I think he was more just like pissed off that like. He was kind of jaded almost. Well, I mean, no, no, he was absolutely yeah. pissed that his idol just like re- completely rejected him. So I think he wanted to surpass. But, uh, but yeah, I, well, I think that comes back to the point that he didn't have any powers, and he thought that wasn't a redeeming quality. He didn't think that I think was he becoming did think, of a hero he thought, to like, not have superpowers. I don't know, but did he think less of himself, you think, because he didn't have well, powers? Well, maybe not less of himself, but I guess it's like, I don't know, less, less of the world. And so he wanted to prove to the world that he is a hero, so he comes up with all this technology to make himself a hero. Yeah, I don't know. I just disagree with... I think taken in a... I guess my point is taken in a vacuum, I disagree with the line, when everyone's super, no one will be, even if it's, like, a very memeable line. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But, yeah, no, having having a world full of people with superheroes, like, normal, everyday people, that'd suck. I think it depends if it would be, like... People are such scumbags. Imagine if they had superpowers. I think it would... (laughs) would, It would be... The world would stop. I think it would depend on... Could you imagine trying to, like, commute... I think and everyone it would, has superpowers. I think it would depend on Murder if... would be the worst. I think it would depend on if it was, like, season four of Big Mouse, where it's, like, everyone had, like, substantial abilities. <laughs> or if it was, like, 
my hero where it's like yeah everyone has powers but like most of them are kind of innocuous Mm -hmm. and Um, like yeah i don't know that's that's an interesting take um i think like the whole thing is it's like everyone would have to learn to not be dicks yeah if everyone had superpowers otherwise (laughs) like society just wouldn't well it's almost like mutually assured destruction yeah I think that's well, kind well, of then, what it is. Then I think if people actually did have superpowers, like the way our governments work and everything, I don't think that, I don't think a government would work. No. With, with like people with superpowers, I just don't see that being feasible because I think so many people would be anarchists with like the powers that they have. Oh yeah, Antifa would just. I need to catch up on this beer a little bit, so you guys are going to have to pick up the slack for a couple minutes. We're going to have to pick up the slack. Well, the sad news is the fact that my laptop has 4%. Oh, shit. So just charge it. Yeah, you have your charger right there. Yeah, but, like, where's where's a plug? That's, like, the issue here? Yeah. Yeah, I got a plug. (laughs) (laughs) Give it a little charge. It's the other side. Other side. Um, But, yeah. So, TLDR... Uh, superpowers this is definitely too short, but I got one. <laughs> superpowers, I don't think would would be super helpful to society, as much as I like to indulge in that fantasy. It's no, it's not a good idea. Um, but yeah, you you, you know what this is a good time for? Kibble. Ki- oh no. Are we actually? No, no <laughs> way. I'm not it's, doing it's a this. Good, it's a good time for I kibble. I have to wake up to. Wo- I have to wake up for work. Like. Just a couple. Seven hours. <laughs> you, said, you told everybody to unsubscribe if we didn't do it. It's true. We we have to be true to our word. Guys, now. you can still subscribe even if we don't eat kibble. It's okay. All right. Pause. I the, approve. Pause the recording. No, don't. All right. We back on the air. We are back on the air. All right. We great. Are back. For the moment, yes. you all have been waiting for the moment. Oh I promise God. you. Last week when this was. Approached as a subject. All right, so this is uh, I am's dog food for senior dogs because I have a senior dog. I so what? Eat enough dinner for this. <laughs> so all I have, all I have had are Totino's pizza rolls today. Which, by the way, if there is a god, I would say that that's probably his gift to humanity: the <laughs> meat lovers Totino's pizza rolls. Sure. I think I Hot think you're take, kind of sleeping on pizza bagels here. I'm not a big pizza bagel guy. Because well, here's the thing: I love bagels. I actually lie. That's not the only thing I've had today. Because I, I did have a ba- pizza. I did have a bacon, egg, and cheese. But <laughs> you put them together. Well, here's the thing: it's heaven. I don't like the mini bagels. Like I, for whatever reason, they just don't taste as good to me. Speaking of, doesn't taste as good to me. Well, I I, I don't have the box on me, so I'm gonna need you to preface, you know. What kind of flavor this is? What what makes the special? I think it's the pepperoni. I think it's just the standard kibble. I think the oh, oh the kibble. I yeah. like the, the pizza rolls. <laughs> it comes in the purple bag. <laughs> oh oh, a purple bag. Okay. Yeah, using the I am. Well, yeah, because the green bags for like adult dogs. So we had mm-hmm. recently switched to the purple for senior, senior. dogs. Huh. Um, I think it's just like more digestible and easier to chew. Would be my guess. Okay. I don't really. They're definitely smaller, like pebbles, if you could call them that. I'll I'll tell that. Yeah, pe- pebble is a good word. Pebble's a good word. It doesn't smell very appetizing. I'll no, it doesn't. It smells it, like all kibble smells. It, yeah. it kind of looks like. Uh, it kind of looks like deer shit. I really feel. Like like deer shit. I really feel like you set this up knowing that I would pick a beer for this week that you didn't like, and this was your way of getting back at me. <laughs> You're both poisoning me. I'm not that forward thinking, <laughs> because you knew this already. You knew, you knew that I was going to make a eat kibble, so you got the beer that you knew I wouldn't like. As oh, revenge. flipping and it around on it. me. Very interesting. That's theory. the only way that this sequence of events see i'm not smart enough to think that like in advance so <laughs> i forgot we were doing this <laughs> <laughs> literally just forgot totally just... forgot all right down the hatch all right darvin in the mouth <laughs> dude we just <laughs> did it you <laughs> gotta eat it no i'm not eating it eat it Fuck no. One, right. I did not agree to dude, this. Dude, just literally. You did. Dude, li- I didn't, when did I agree? You know what? This kind of tastes like matzah. <laughs> you put 
makes you think I want to eat matzah? <laughs> the one goy here. <laughs> it's all right. Darwin, just one pebble. Uh, just, uh, I really don't want to. I will say, like, and this is like really a weird. This is a. This is one of those things in life where I think it's like. What I'm about to say makes no sense in like language wise, but I think you'll understand what I'm saying. It tastes like the way it smells. That does not make me want to try it anymore. No, it absolutely does. No, it's not. The way it's, it not it's not an endorsement. It, 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 it's an. It's I think, an incredibly I think, transparent product. I think the thing is when you smell something in your brain, I think subconsciously you formulate like how you think it's gonna taste, and I think this like matches up to that one for one. There's just so little flavor it's to it. It's very dry. There's like no flavor. It's like fifty percent dehydrated chicken. I think very much is just dehydrated. Do you chicken. know what it tastes like to me, or like the taste it leaves in your mouth? You ever had those Flintstone vitamins as a kid? No, those were delicious. Yo, but like, I could well, eat, then you like, love I this. Could, I could eat like a handful. Dude, of those. Not, no, no, dude, no. Wait, don't lie to me like that. You, the you, you didn't even. You didn't even. It tastes like, 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 like wonderful kid. fruits. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Not, not the Flintstone gummies. The Flintstone like hard vitamins. You ever have those? Maybe, because they that's what familiar. that's what this tastes like. Because it has like it leaves a very powdery feel in your mouth, and I this like copies that except it's well, drier. That, that's, that's the mouth feel. It's not the taste. It's the mouth. Doesn't feel. this make you? Doesn't this make you feel kind of bad for like dogs? Because this is what they eat. Well, then you well, have the option I mean, of buying gourmet dog food and spending like a hundred percent more of your money. <laughs> Darvin, eat the fucking dog food. I swear to God. No. Well, I think we gotta kick him off the show. I think so. Oh, I can't believe I'm you're saying You're gonna this. kick me off the show. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I almost would prefer Connor to be back. You didn't even do the <laughs> show with Connor. <laughs> I, I almost would like that, but I know I would like it better. Do you know why? Because why he would that? eat kibble. No, he no, wouldn't. He, he, he would eat kibble. No, he there, was a, there was a much higher chance of Darwin doing this than Connor. Connor would not do this in a million years. I think if I were drinking a better beer... If Connor's life depended on it, he, he would wouldn't not. Eat this. <laughs> he would not. <laughs> if somebody he cared about's life depended on it, he would not. <laughs> what's so scary? What's so scary about it? It's just. Can we cut just... that, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, it's, it's just. It's just gross. Dude, you haven't eaten it. Don't I, tell us that it's gross. I've licked it before. You've licked it. I have licked, it. Ooh, I have licked ooh, kibble he's, before. He's licked kibble. He's licked it. It's this. It's the equivalent to tasting it. Darwin, here's the thing. It's not good. I promise you, it's not terrible. It's not Just as try bad as you piece. think it is. It's really not. Do you like the whole thing where it's like you're chewing it but not tasting it? Do that. Oh, I dropped it. Like you're just not considering it. Yeah. All right. It's in his <laughs> mouth. He's chewing. He's chewing. He's shaking his head. No. He's reaching for his beer. He's double at- clutch the beer in his mouth. That was a big swig. Oh, he's washing it down. He's washing it he's down. Taking, Fuck no. He's taking the how objectively did, bad beer so I have and to ask, drinking this. So I have to ask, how much did you chew it? There's just, like, the most <laughs> disgusting... Like, you're, you just smelled something <laughs> awful. <laughs> disgusting. How you, much did you, you chew so it? I hate, I hate the aftertaste. I hate the feel of it in my mouth and my teeth. I definitely agree with both those statements. The aftertaste and the... Uh, like the feeling, texture yeah. really bothers it's me. Like, it's like all dehydr- dehydrated chicken. It's like very, shit. very like crunchy. Like it's just, ve- it just comes apart. It's just- At the very least, it makes me want to like, if I were to prepare this for a dog, throw it in a boiling pot and like boil it, it for a little bit. It makes me want to grab and some. it out and put it in a. Makes me want to grab some Listerine. I mean, oh, number one. Well, I mean, with my dog sometimes, we'll just like take some bacon bits throw it in her bowl mix Bacon it bits. yeah i imagine it helps all right lewis helps anything absolutely food. disgusting and repulsive you want us to do next time no no it really no. hasn't it no. i'll figure it out i'll find something even more sadistic <laughs> if anything maybe i'll do the the fucking isn't it more masochistic because you're doing it too yeah i guess all i'll right. do the uh the harry it's, potter it's jelly sadistic and time. masochistic how about that that would be the dope. What? Harry Potter jelly beans. They make those, right? They, yeah, they actually yeah, they do. actually make those. Do they and make they're... it with the gross ass flavors? Yeah, yeah. No, there's like a game you can play, like like literally a whole set of like 
jelly beans and a little spinner, and it tells you which one you have to try. We should definitely and, do that. Like each flavor corresponds with an, like another color, like the same color, but a different gross. What flavor. were like it's some like of chocolate the and like dog? Food. So like, what were some Ooh. of the bad ones? Like I remember, vomit was one. Vomit Vo- was horrible. Vomit was one that Dumbledore mentioned in passing, but I don't think he actually had on the. No, that was thing. the. I want to say it was the second movie. The second movie, Dumbledore mentions it in passing. Yeah, I don't think he actually... Because they the were one, all the hospital beds, the one and then he brought the jelly Only beans Harry there. was. The, no, I remember he didn't bring the jelly beans. Well, People brought the jelly beans, and Dumbledore's like... By the way, episodes one... Or not, uh, movies one and two, Dumbledore, my favorite Dumbledore. But... I don't know how much I agree with that. A little bit of a hot take, perhaps, but I uh, he's my favorite Dumbledore. Okay. But he, um, basically, uh, Harry's in the hospital bed after he fights the Basilisk and Tom Riddle and destroys the Horcrux, and, uh, there's a bunch of candy in his hospital bed, yeah. like, by his hospital yeah, bed, yeah, yeah. and Dumbledore's like, oh, I see Mr. Weasley helped himself to your bow and bots every flavored beans. <laughs> like, in my youth, I remember coming out the unfortunate... <laughs> Event of coming across a vomit flavored one, and then he starts <laughs> chewing one and goes, Hmm, earwax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, earwax is one of them. Earwax is gross. Um, earwax was one of them. Clipped toenails is another one. Mm. Like, I don't. Um, did they mention that like in the movie? Freshly movies? mowed grass. Is I, another one. I know that's that a one. good flavored bean, though. For it's, what it's well, worth. Yeah, no. For, for the gross ones, I would definitely take that. I, um, they really need to make it. Good. They need to make a gasoline flavored bean. That no. would be so divisive. <laughs> <laughs> People would either totally love it or absolutely hate it. Oh, yeah, it, it would be. <laughs> Then you find out who the real fucked up people in this world. What, like, celebrity was famous for doing that? Wasn't it, like, Amy Winehouse? What, sniffing gasoline? Huffing gas. Drinking gasoline. You can't drink oh, gasoline. <laughs> you would die. Gasoline. I'll never forget the line from American Dad that I love where uh, they're doing, like, a parody of the... Uh, one of the songs from Greece, and Roger's just going, This terrain tastes good because it's green. <laughs> what? Real quick, what good, like, green drinks are there? There's none. Mountain Dew. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> By the way, all right, well, I was going to say Sprite, but Sprite's bottle's green, but it's not green. It's, no, it's clear. Yeah. I just remember looking. Uh, I can't really think of it. There was a uh, John, margaritas. Oh, true. There was a John Oliver bit where he was talking about how. Uh, uh, he, basically, he was just shitting on Mountain Dew Code Red. Oh, he always does. And the whole <laughs> the whole bit was he was like reading the comments section for like mean comments and stuff, and one guy was just like, "I hate I hate John Oliver because he shat on my fourth favorite red soda." <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> If you have a four favorite red soda, I can't even. Something wrong. I that's can't, the guy who should be deported. <laughs> I can't even name four red sodas. I don't know. Um, I probably could, but I don't want to try. So- well, sodas is different. Red drinks that would be a lot easier. No, a lot red, no, red, red sodas. Red excuse sodas. me, it has to be well, a so there's, soda. So there's Mountain Dew Code Red. It's so um, bad. there's a uh, it's Fanta like fruit punch. Fanta has like all. Mm. They have a really? bunch of different flavors. Um, this dog food's so off-putting, dude. I I told you that's why I didn't want to eat it. I agreed with you. I'm just saying, like, Lewis, grow, we oh, both you. did it. So grow a pair and do it. I did it, and okay? you did. Are do you it. happy now? I am. I'm much more Good. happy now. Okay, I have a lot so more so not. from one disgusting thing to the other, I think we need to wrap up with this beer review. All right, hang on, one thing it. I wanted. One thing I wanted to talk about first, if uh, you guys wouldn't mind, is uh, dating apps. <laughs> Thoughts. <laughs> Um, that's my lead in hinge hinge are you on are you on are you guys hinge. either you guys on any dating apps I am on hinge you're on hinge I am not I have a tinder but I haven't like used it I have okay. not touched is tinder, tinder so a long. dating app no yes I don't think so so you say yes you say I no. think I think it is like pretty much solely for hookups it's 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 I a, it's a if, dino it's a dating well, app in name only I think <laughs> I like that <laughs> the, Democrat in I, I would say that I would say in terms of like what is labeled as, in terms of like, on the app store and stuff? Yeah, I think it'd be labeled as a dating app. But like, that's not the. That's question. not its purpose. Yeah. That's not what it is. Like, here's the thing. With do you think that, totally do you hookups. think the designers 
in like when they designed it had the idea in mind for it to be a hookup app. Yes. You do think that? I think I think that like was... the full intention was just for sex. Yes. Okay. I generally I generally think it was meant for hookups. All right, to backtrack a little bit, you said you're on Hinge. Yes. I hear good things about Hinge. Yeah, Are because it, 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 it filters out the weirdos. I heard, like, it was just... It really, Some, like, Tinder, the problem with Tinder is, like, there's so many weirdos on Someone it, I don't... Res- unverified profiles. <laughs> someone I... <laughs> I feel like I'm just gonna Half get... Half of them are just catfished. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm just gonna get, like, robbed if I meet up with them. Something, uh... Something a guy I don't respect told me, but I'll say it nonetheless, was you only meet respectable women on Hinge. <laughs> you do. You meet very well, respectable women. For that, women. you go to JD. <laughs> What was it? Jade U porn and J U porn? <laughs> Not the same thing. Is, it, is that like a category on like porn sites? Like, like I don't Jewish? Know. Not, not the same thing. <laughs> Clunky, unfashionable shoes. <laughs> no, so I'm on no dating apps, but I've like definitely considered getting on a couple. So Hinge is a name you're, that's been you're not, you're not missing much, honestly. You're, you're it's, not. It's not really. You're not missing anything unless you feel unless you actually like need. Unless you well, feel unless you feel the biting pain nothing, of loneliness. You know? Wait, what do you say? I said, unless you feel the biting pain of loneliness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, loneliness and she bites hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you kind of get used to it after a while. And you're just like, you know, I'm kind of okay with this. Want my diaper botch? <laughs> oh, I live on the diaper botch. <laughs> to me, doing something is better than nothing. No, I, I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, personally, I'd, I'd rather actually meet girls like, face to face. Yeah, before, no, no, no. Before I definitely, I, like, get, I definitely get that. I definitely get that. I will say it's not like I thought it would be really weird to meet it's, people. It's not. No, to meet people. Yeah, like after you've only met them online, it's actually quite nice. It seems to me you like know? the it's reason. Like, it seems to me like the reason that is is because only like relatively proactive people are on dating apps. Hinge. So people who are like, <laughs> well, okay, hinge. fair enough. Fair it has enough. to be hinge. Fair enough. All right, so maybe we'll do that next episode. I'll, we'll all set up a hinge profile on the air. How's that? Yeah, and we can coach you through it. It's very simple, but you you do need some curious. The problem pictures. is I don't have a lot of good photos of myself. Oh, we need. We, this also. needs to be like a la Seinfeld, like George. We're gonna are, manufacture are we, are we a thing for <laughs> dating accounts for ourselves. Did you see? Have episode? you ever seen? There's like a Twitter account of like uh, called Modern Seinfeld, and the guy just pitches like modern Seinfeld episodes. Oh, that's and great. There was one where George was like, I forget, it was. Uh, I think it was. He met a girl on Tinder, and uh, she, all her picks were group picks. And he wasn't sure which one she was, and he's like convinced she's the ugly one. And Elaine's like, "How do you know she's not the pretty one?" He's like, "How naive can you be, Elaine?" <laughs> In fairness, if I can if I come across a profile that's exclusively group photos, you just swipe left. That to me is a red flag. Yeah, huge no, red I agree flag. With that. You you need you need a mix. You need group photos to show. Oh, I have friends. Because to me, you know, to me, your leading photos, photos, your leading photo has to be single. Like, yeah. And to me, that's not. And to me, that's not being superficial. To me, that like screams to me that the person who owns that profile lacks self confidence. Yeah. Yes. Which is like the most. Which I think male or female is like the most unattractive trait out there. Hundred percent. Oh, easily. If you can't feel comfortable in your own skin. If you're how afraid to show you, yourself off, how, how, how could are you, you gonna? How is anyone gonna notice you? Also, I'm how just, is anyone gonna want to? Also, full disclosure, you. I want to keep this conversation going because I'm stalling for time with this beer, like <laughs> struggling to finish before a, we t- get to the your, review. I'm, time. I'm happy yeah. to keep this conversation yeah, I've, going. I've got, I've got a little bit of time still. Okay. Because you two have work tomorrow. <laughs> that is I do. True. I don't have to get up at four thirty though. I'm yeah. not getting up at four thirty. I'm getting up at like. 5.30. Wow. <laughs> I, I have to drive to Flanders tomorrow. To be That's fair, like you're done drive. at like 3, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Like, like 2.30, 3. Oh, I start school in like a few days. I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's like I go for only a couple days and then I have a long weekend after. So. Well, I'm going to have to start school soon. So. Okay, but you still have like a year. Well, well I guess no, you have no, to start no, like no, applying no, like, and I'm, stuff, right? I'm trying to like take online classes and work while I'm 
So you have to start like applying and stuff then, right? Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, anybody here? Anything about OK Cupid? <laughs> I know people I've heard used about it, it and I'm. I have not used it. Yeah. OK Cupid, OK Stupid. Uh, is is twenty three and Me is not a dating app, but is that? Like, <laughs> but it should, unless unless you want it to be. But it should be. I think. <laughs> There should be, like, a social uh, media aspect to that. Oh, yeah. Hey, just, you're my have... third cousin. Just wanted to let you know we can fuck. That's, <laughs> that's going to end so badly because if it matched you on the similarity of your genetic profile, that would be a disaster. You would hope it would do the opposite. Oh, je- like, <laughs> it's gene selectivity. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, oh, you must be related. How about you guys meet? <laughs> To like, me, I just uh-oh. have like. To me, I just have like the. Um, <laughs> you must be their cousin. <laughs> to me, just like I have the uh, stereotypical like Nazi screaming in the back of my head, like, <laughs> "And they should have the blonde hair and the blue eyes and the superior race." <laughs> <laughs> like that's what I think of when I think of like genetic selectivity. <laughs> uh. Aryans, man. <laughs> Fucking Aryans. <laughs> <laughs> what was that thing? Oh, yeah, well, I told you I read all that stuff on, like, how Mein Kampf gets published, like, recently. Oh, yeah. Well, it's... Be- didn't I show... I showed you guys that video of the French... The French grandfather who Such gave a- his oh, kid <laughs> Mein Kampf <laughs> instead of Minecraft. And you'd be so surprised because, like... So, wait, just to clarify what Lewis said, I grandfather in France for Christmas gave his grandson Mein Kampf when he asks for Minecraft. <laughs> but you would be so surprised how similar Mein Kampf and Minecraft sound in a French accent. Because the dad goes... Care to do it for us. Well, I, I'll do my one best. Says, you're the mein, only mein one who's, Kampf, you're the one only one who speaks French. French well, here, well so. yeah, the, the, the grandfather, it, you know, they, they start, the dad starts yelling at the grandfather and he's, he's, he's like, he, he, he won Mein Kampf. And he goes, no, mein Kampf. <laughs> mein Kampf. Mein Kampf. By the no, way, Kampf. by the <laughs> way, like, it has the ch, and it has the ch. By the way, the mein. <laughs> by the way, it's got the, all the same sounds. By the way, the grandfather was way too casual about it. I he think. was. I think he, he was, was just very you know, concerning. I give him the benefit of the doubt, and just like he was so embarrassed, he just couldn't react. <laughs> but, he, wanted, he, he wanted mein Kampf. No, he but, wanted mein Kampf. But the real question is. Like, what is a grandfather doing, even considering <laughs> buying Mein Kampf? It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, little little Pierre wants Mein Kampf. Like, does that not raise a red flag? For Especially you? you're not gonna talk to your talk to the parents about that. And look, I'm not sure he wants like uh, like you go to the dad. You're like, are you sure he wants this? And look, here's the thing. I don't know like what the vibe on Nazism is in France, but I it's have not to, great. But I have to imagine Adolf casual. I have to it. imagine Adolf Hitler's not their most favorite person. I imagine they're not his biggest fan. <laughs> you know, it's, considering the uh, he occupation. <laughs> yeah. Occupado. Occupado. <laughs> oh, uh but uh <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. What a what an irresponsible grandfather. What 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 are you even thinking? You know what? Like he, he tried must have no thoughts in your brain. I think he thought he was whatsoever. trying to do a good thing and get his grandson something he really wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like I right, put it this way, also like uh, our friend Michael, I think has read Mein Kampf. I haven't read it. Has I, he? Yeah, I think for school he had to read it, but it's like a very. I don't know, but it seems to me like it would be somewhat of a tough read. Like, just, uh, not, like, not tough in the sense that, like, oh my god, this stuff's so disgusting, which it is, but tough in the sense that, like, grammatically and stuff, it seems like it would be hard to get through. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like... German translation? Well, I was gonna say, no, like, I think just, like, the writing. Like, it's just, like, a slog. Like, for example, Marx, if you, I don't know if you guys have read Marx, I've read a lot of Marx. Uh, for like philosophy and stuff and gov it's like hard to get through a lot like that's that's what i've heard about. like the stuff is like ob- the stuff he's saying it's like even if you you could vehemently disagree with it i think and still think that he's really smart mm-hmm. but he's not a good writer 
Gotcha. <laughs> like, it, it's he just has so much to say, and you like, just like, kind of, like... The way he's saying it doesn't he really... Has a lot it's, to, it's not concise enough. He has a lot to say, and he just kind of vomits on the page, is, like, kind of my eighth so, grade English so kind of used stuff. to say. He yeah. doesn't plan out his thoughts, he just kind of, like... Says them, yeah. Yeah, he just kind of, like... Which in philosophy is hard, but Marx really is more of a historian than a philosopher. I is my uh, opinion, but... Mm-hmm. Certainly not an economist, but <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we just went from Hitler to Marx to like all these what? What rather on unpopular right? people. <laughs> we went from dating apps <laughs> to, to Mein Kampf, to Marxism. Um, <laughs> but um, Bob's yeah. Burgers is on the TV right now. You guys ever watch Bob's Burgers? I did for for a short period of time. I didn't watch a whole lot of it. I will I say it was a funny show. There are two scenes in the show that just make me laugh every time I watch them. I think we're gonna know at least one. The first one is uh, when Tina Bob's teaching Tina how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that one? Yes. Oh, yeah, I think about and he hits like the only other car in the parking lot. <laughs> the other one's definitely obscure because it's like from like the first. Like, it might be honestly from, like, the second episode, but to me it was hilarious. Gene was in, like, the mascot race at, like, the minor league baseball game in their area. And he was representing Bob's Burgers. And he wins the mascot race by cheating, like, con- like every single time. And uh, so he gets, like, a second to, like, talk to the fans. <laughs> and the guy's, like... Uh, and the guy's like, uh, he's like, I, yeah, I'm the hamburger for my dad's burger store. He's like, oh, and what's the name of the burger store? And he just goes, oh, I know this. It's, uh, oh, and he, like, doesn't know. And in the <laughs> background, you just hear, in the stand, you just hear Bob screaming, Bob's Burgers! Bob's Burger!" <laughs> and then Gene finally, like, do- he doesn't get it. And he walks back over to, the like, the family to congratulate him <laughs> for, like, winning the race. And Bob's just like, Gene, you live above the store. You work in it every day. And he's like, yeah, but you're my dad, so I just call it Dad's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Love that bit. I kind of want to see what this music store bit is all about. You would. Is this show still running? Or, I think or is it this is. just I, reruns? Are you sure? I don't I don't think it is. It might not be, I don't know. I have no clue. Doesn't but, the uh, chick who plays uh Louise is doesn't she do like a lot of stuff? She's like a really talented voice actress, right? I think I, it might be the same person who voices like Timmy Turner on Fairly Odd Parents. Oh. It could be. I know. Wait, I showed you that thing for the like the one of the there's like two voice actors on that whole show. Really? Like all the guys, on really on all the guys do so many roles. Like I showed you the video for Gordy. He does like the guy who plays Gordy in Ned's Declassified is also the voice for Timmy's dad and Cosmo, and I think like he's the voice of Cosmo yeah, also. And I think he does other characters Whoa. also. Oh, oh guys, it is still running. It is still Bob's oh. Burgers is still running. Okay. okay. Unreal. Unreal. Louise, Kristen wow. Shaw. Yeah, I'm just doing not a good Oh, wait, no, Kristen Shaw, she's, um, what was her big, what was her big thing? Go to her besides... IMDb. No, I mean, I recognize her face. Oh, it's because she went to Northwestern. Oh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh. <laughs> Therefore, she must be famous. <laughs> Kristen Shaw, John Hammond, Julia Louis Dreyfus, and Louis Donowski. <laughs> you forgot Stephen Colbert. Oh, oh, oh I also forgot Stephen, Stephen Colbert. Colbert and Seth Meyers. To me, really, those right, are the ones not, they brag about on. Let's on not associate tours. Seth Meyers with Stephen Colbert. Uh, but <laughs> whoa. <laughs> No, but real talk, um, I was going to say, I always, like, associate Stephen Colbert with Clemson, because he's, like, a huge Clemson fan, because he grew up in South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, he went to Northwest. He's very yeah. much a southern, southern man. <laughs> Wasn't there, like, also, it was, uh, I remember this year, uh, so you guys, so Darwin, you know, Sam Darnold got mono. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the backup quarterback got injured. I forget who, was it Marshall 
Falk. No, not Marshall Falk. He's a great football player. Marshall Falk. It was, uh... That's old. I'm trying to remember, like, the Jets' third-string quarterback was, uh... I forget his name, but I remember he went to Northwestern. I, I have no clue. John Heyman was, like, all over him. He went <laughs> to Northwestern. <laughs> Obviously terrible. No offense. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> hey, Brad Hall, didn't he also go to... Brad Hall did not go to Northwest. Oh, he didn't. Oh, no, that's a shame. It's it's a big shame. Mm. Wait, doesn't Julia Louis-Dreyfus' kid go to Northwest? Yes, Charlie Hall. Is he on the basketball team? He was a walk-on onto the basketball okay. team. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I remember like she was at a ton of the games when they were good. Mm-hmm. Or like in the tournament. She was at graduation when, when I was there. I didn't see her, but... Really? She, she was he, at graduation. Was he year? He's our year. He's our year. That's pretty dope. I remember John yeah. Gruden. So John Gruden's son was like the backup quarterback for Lafayette, and uh, he was like at one of the games, like just so incognito. <laughs> Dude, like a hood on. Yeah, exactly. He had a hood on. It was raining, but he had a hood on. <laughs> uh, Deuce, Umbrella and a hood. Yeah. Deuce Gruden is the guy's name. Deuce Gruden. Yeah, I think he's like a strength coach now for the Redskins or something like that. It's a pretty good gig to have. It seems like a great gig to have. You get to fucking get paid like six figures a year just to tell people to live to lift weights, and even like they getting do it. to lift weights for free too. <laughs> <laughs> Access to an NFL facility. I, yeah, he definitely has to get paid millions. But no, no, like, no, six figures definitely. Oh, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. I would no easily easily yeah. like a hundred fifty. I'd say. I would say, like. Yeah, you're making a good living if you're just. Fucking Although I will say it's like a step up, like. College coaches make nothing. That is true. Like, oh, all right. Well, well obviously, I don't know about that. There excuse, me, excuse me, Jim Harbaugh. I was going to say, there's <laughs> yeah. obviously some who make a lot of money. Our but football most coach, college coaches make put, nothing. Put this in perspective. Yeah. Our, our college coach makes more than our, our college football coach makes more than our president. I'm sure. I can believe. But uh, our. Which is nuts. But, like, yeah. my. No, it's absolutely insane. My uh, coach for sprints when I was in school made, like, literally like 30 to 40 grand like you had to work multiple jobs <laughs> wow granted we're in pennsylvania so like that goes a lot further mm-hmm. but still well i mean i yeah. imagine that he probably has some sort of uh involvement in like education at, at lafayette no he doesn't none at all he's a f- they're full time sp- because they had to recruit it's like a full-time job oh, i guess that makes sense he but left I mean, like for me at least like, my guy left for Hertz. He works at Hertz now. <laughs> he actually has like a good gig there. Actually, I think. Sure, it's he not became, too bad. I think he got like a managerial position. So. That's pretty good. That's solid. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, like, at my school, a lot of the coaches. Wait, wait, real quick. So that just reminded me of a story where uh, I, I might have told you guys this before, but a good buddy of mine, I uh, he grad, he's a year older than us. Uh, went to Lafayette with me. He graduated uh, with an economics degree. And he went to work for Wells Fargo in St. Louis, which had, like, a really low-level position. Mm-hmm. Like, he just wanted to get him to, like, sponsor his exams and stuff. He's from Long Island, so he had to move out to St. Louis. Um, and he worked there for a while, like, because it's, like, a terrible job. Like, hated it. <laughs> he was in, He was there during the whole, like, Wells Fargo, like... The whole fiasco. Yeah, the whole fiasco with them, like, creating fake accounts and stuff. Yo, oh, God. And, uh, he says, he honestly said, all right, Wells Fargo, don't sue us for this, but he says they're still doing it. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh But, uh... I, I would believe that. But, um, he also said, uh, basically, the one cool thing he did... Is he got promoted a couple times, and he said he got to set his own hours. So he he works like a weird shift. He works like two to ten, but he really likes that. Honestly, yeah, it seems like a cool shift. Doesn't sound horrible. <laughs> yeah, because instead of lunch break, you get like a little dinner dinner break. break and at the and end then, of the day, you go home, yeah. you go to you go to bed. He was you wake ab- up, and you have like you have like four hours until work. He was able to. Yeah, St. Louis cute. seems like a cool city, but it's also the most poorly planned city in America. Yeah, <laughs> its population's been steadily declining since 1950. It's also but, the murder capital of the United well, so States. So he moved from an area that had 17 murders last year to an area that now has four because of his promotions. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yes, yeah. but uh, so he was telling me he was looking to he was interviewing with the. Uh, so he was looking to leave, and he was interviewing with uh, Sheets. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, like, like the like convenience store. Or gas yeah, store. so Lewis, it's literally just like Wawa. 
just it's in like Pennsylvania. Or quick right. check or, yeah. It's in Pennsylvania, I guess the South too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um it's like not yeah. not the South, but like Maryland, Virginia. Kind sure. Of area. Okay. It, yeah, we got him in Pennsylvania. So he was um look we don't have them in New Jersey though. No. So he was looking for uh so he got so he was interviewing for like a really good like executive like position which would have been an awesome job. But and that was like all part of his plan because uh his parents were able to tell people he worked at Wells Fargo even though he had a terrible job. Mm-hmm. And now they'd have to tell people he works at Sheets <laughs> <laughs> even though he has a really good job. Uh, uh, but yeah but you were saying I totally forgot what I was going to say fair that happens from uh, time to time that's okay we have to wrap it up let's get on to the let's let's get on to the beer reviews Uh, yeah Darby, or, you know what, Lewis, you want to go first, or should since, we go since, first so you can collect your thoughts for a well, I mean, you clearly, little bit? Is this going to be? Hated the most. Is this going to be a rant or is this not going to be a? It's rant? It's not going to be a rant. All right, so then you can go ahead. All right, I also haven't finished mine yet, so it the, just the prospect of a s'more beer really doesn't appeal to me because. This is before you do remind people what it is. Like, we're all right, drinking. yeah, yeah, of course. The this is a s'more. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's the it's the Saranac s'more porter. Uh, ale with artificial and natural flavors, uh, six point two percent alcohol, and uh, twenty two IBUs, which I totally forget what they are. But uh, so this, yeah, already the international brewing undertones. So if it says ale with artificial natural flavors, usually I don't care about artificial versus natural flavors. But if they have to specify this, I think a it's good clearly of this is artificial. it's clearly just fake because they didn't do any work in the fermentation process to actually make it taste like a s'more given the ingredients that were put into So you wait, so just to not, sorry to cut you off but you feel like it doesn't taste like a s'more? It does. Okay. But you might as well have taken the same flavors, sprayed them into whatever other beverage you want or drop them into whatever other beverage put it, you put want. Put it in a soda stream. You call don't it a like- soda stream. It's s'more soda. Okay, it's not like, oh, I brewed these spices and herbs and, and it's, things in it's the it's same... It's like you have a packet of flavoring and you just... Yeah, I just dumped a packet of flavor in. into a porter and called it a s'more. And the problem with that, to me, is first of all, I don't like sweet beer. This already kind of tastes sweet. But then, you're not even achieving that flavor through the process. You're just dropping a flavor pack in. So, I don't think you realize what a highfalutin rip... Like just the destruction you had of that beer <laughs> in such like a high, I guess I'm gonna say a highfalutin way of saying it. You're like they don't even use real flavoring; they artificially infuse it into the beer. How dare they? <laughs> you might as well be. You might as well be like back sweetening. You even. might as well have just fed me dog shit. You, might you as know well what? Just fed him kibble. <laughs> you gotta eat another one. No, it's no, not you're not. Hell no, it's not worth it. No, no, not, right. not bro. Darby, what? Or Darby, why do you go? Because I'm still working. I'm almost All right. done. I don't think this beer is too bad. Um, the principle of it bothers me more than the actual taste. I do agree with that. I agree with that. That was also a bit of a highfalutin rip. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 even the conception of this beer bothers me more than the atrocity <laughs> of its existence. <laughs> uh, I would say compared to the Dunkin' Donuts. Stout that we had okay for for our first uh, session sure um, I would say it was about on par with it maybe a little bit lower I just I don't think s'mores is something you should make into a drink unless it's like like a, a really good shot what do you two think of the uh, design of the bottle um it's okay and it, it feels somewhat generic now did you notice the construction of the s'more on the bottle what's your um, opinion on that because it goes graham cracker chocolate, chocolate marshmallow chocolate graham cracker double so chocolate here's the thing yeah i think if like in concept i mean i'm a huge chocolate fan so of I'm course like, i see this i'm like oh this this dude knows how to live but, but when, I make, when i make my own s'mores I don't go chocolate on both sides. I think it's only right to do graham cracker, marshmallow, chocolate. The marshmallow on top of the graham cracker, on top of the, on top of the chocolate. I a hundred percent agree. And then graham cracker. 
I and think this gr- is from two people way, who like chocolate. Yes, I I fucking love chocolate. I could eat that every day for the rest of my life if I had to. Um, but yeah, the design is interesting. Um, you say that like it's a punishment. Like most people wouldn't do that. I mean, I don't think a lot of people would. Oh, you mean like eating exclusively? Because all you said was just no, eat no, it every no, no, day no, no, for the no, rest no. of my life. Exclusively chocolate every okay. day for the rest of my life. Yeah, I, I, I could do that. I, I don't think not. I'd ever get really tired of it. I would not do that. So there's a lot of ways that you can eat chocolate. Um, okay. Fox yeah. News. That was a Showing weird a thing. A lot of people with a lot of thighs. <laughs> Thunder hey. thighs. <laughs> hey, well, you got because... to do, do the thighs for the guys. That's what I've learned. Well, also because it's freaking like 60 degrees out this whole weekend. Yeah, so people it's break out the shorts. It's ridiculously warm. It's insane. All right, I, I feel attacked because I'm the only one wearing shorts here. Don't, because I wore shorts earlier today. Okay. Hey. Um, but yeah, actually, <laughs> the first time I walked outside today was when I was picking up lunch. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, it's way too warm for January. It's the middle of January. Come on. 65 right, like, degrees. Are you fucking kidding? Stay on topic. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> anyway beer it's not bad beers it's not good right. i give it like oh don't give okay, your okay. don't give your okay, okay, all okay. right um i liked this <laughs> i feel like a little bit of an unpopular opinion um it's definitely not like an all-purpose beer it's mm-hmm. definitely situational i drank it and i Maybe it's my uh, unrefined palate, Lewis, but I I did get the sense that uh, of I did get that note of s'more. I definitely got that taste. It's a pretty uh, unique taste. I mean, I feel as though it's like relatively hard to mimic. Um, I think the design of the bottle does leave something to be desired. Like it's very brown. The bite mark in the s'more on the bottle is very unrealistic because the graham crackers tend to disintegrate when you bite into them. With all due respect, Jake, I feel like the bottle design has nothing to do with the flavor of the beer. No, but you're reviewing the whole thing. Oh, okay. The whole okay. package. Okay. That's why I asked for your opinion on it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a little bland, uh, to be sure. Um, the... Yeah, ale with artificial and natural flavor. I mean, that definitely does diminish it. I do agree with you there. But when I'm talking about overall taste, I will say I enjoy the taste. I don't uh, share your uh, dislike of sweet beers. I do Hmm. like sweet alcohol. I I mean, I definitely don't like stuff that's too sweet. I feel as, to me, this wasn't too sweet. Um... I don't know if it says if it, how much sugar is in this. I, the nutrition facts aren't on this. It's probably on the box. Uh, but overall, I relatively enjoyed drinking this beer. And if you're around like a campfire or something, I feel like this is definitely like a good option. Uh, other than that, though, I will definitely concede that it's it's very situational. It's a niche beer, but I think it does well within that niche. Okay. So we can go around and maybe give our ratings. So out of 10, 5 being average, 6 being slightly above average, 4 being slightly below average. 5. Average beer. It's a decidedly average beer. For something that purports to be much more than that. So to me, it seems like you deem it average isn't maybe the word you would use more mediocre. Yes, it's, it's a more me- the it's, word it's, you would It's really a mediocre effort at a so beer. So you're saying it's an average beer, but... It has, like, no ceiling to be beyond that. Like, nothing can raise it above average. That, that's no. as high as it'll ever go. That's, that's oh. its peak. Okay. <laughs> it peaks at five for you. Okay. Oh, I'll give it I'll give it a six. <laughs> You'll give it a six. Give us your rationale behind that. Um, well, I mean, personally, I mean, from what I've tasted with beers, I think coffee stout's a little bit better. This is also... Are you a coffee drinker? Um... Not, not really. That's but actually, question. like, since I've started working, I've been drinking coffee more often. Fair. Like, uh, we'll just get like a mocha, like an iced mocha, mm-hmm. whenever we stop to get like get someone to eat or drink. Um, but I mean, I haven't been the biggest fan of coffee stouts. Mm-hmm. I'd say like a good one would rank like 
maybe seven and a half if it's like a really good one. Sure. Um, but this is definitely below that. I also think this this is a very situational beer, like you said. Yeah. I don't. I could not drink this if I'm like, you know, just drinking casually with friends at a party or something. This is not something I would have for sure. If there's other options available. Yeah, like okay. I would, I would take a Bud Light over this if I if there are people. You would take a Bud Light. If, if over I'm this. hanging out with people and like okay. a party and stuff, I would drink a Bud Light. I wouldn't drink this. Okay. Because I would drink this too slowly, and it just I don't think it would leave the best taste in my mouth. And I know Bud Light's yeah. not too far off from that. So I'm trying but, to give uh, my rank. I'm trying to formulate my ranking here. What you guys said definitely influenced my opinion. I'm gonna say you're gonna give it a six and a half. You think I'm gonna give it a six and a Maybe half? Maybe a seven. Okay. Maybe a seven. Okay. This, to me, is far superior to a Bud Light, but okay. I had already stated my uh, distaste for Bud Light. Mm-hmm. Bud Light, by the way, if you're listening, sponsor us, I'll say you love Bud Light. A Bud Light for me would be like Light. a four and a half or five on, on the scale. Yeah, to me it would probably, I don't know, I mean, I think it depends like what you drank at college. Like, to me, like... I drank a lot of Bud Light. Most people say, like, <laughs> Natty is disgusting, but that's all I drank at college, so I like Natty a lot more mm. than, like, a lot of those other beers. To me, like, Miller is disgusting. Yeah. But either way, Natty, by the way, if you're listening, it would be my honor to have you as our sponsor. <laughs> Please sponsor us. Saranac, if you're listening, it would be an honor to sponsor us. <laughs> Well, as long as we're just uh, throwing out <laughs> fantasies here. E- esports, if, if you're out there and you hear this, sponsor us, please. Benedict Cumberbatch, if you'd like to sponsor us. Or if you'd like to come on the show. We're more than happy to have you. That Either way, uh, getting to my rating, <laughs> I think this beer, to me, thrives within a niche. Yes. I think that's where I differ from you guys a little bit, because, Lewis, I think you said it was mediocre. It can't really rise above five. Darvin, I think you said it would perform decently within its niche. I think it thrives within a niche. Okay. I think, like, given that campfire, like, more s'moresy feeling, I think this beer does really well. I'd say, like, late spring, early summer, outside. Or even midsummer, I would say. Oh, midsummer. But, oh, oh. Yeah, a little difference oh. of opinion there. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I would say. I am going to give it a six and a half, like you said. Okay. All right. Mm. Uh, so, Lewis, you right. gave it a five. I gave it a six and a half. Dar- so, that's six. what? Like a f- it's five, like a 5.75. Five. Five. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So, like, so a, a slightly above average beer. I think this was the lowest rated one we've done so far. Mm. Yeah. But slightly above average, I think we could still call it. Sure. I, uh, yeah, to me, it does well within a niche probably not something you're just going to want to grab out of the fridge and drink probably not anyone's go-to beer no definitely not but uh saranac if you want to sponsor us uh please sponsor I mean, us amazing fantastic <laughs> that'd be great wouldn't it i have no shortage of uh positive verbs i could associate with this beer, or adjectives i could associate with this beer How but sports. anyway brilliant now, real talk, listeners, we give you our honest opinion every single time. Yep. Uh, that's the point of this podcast. <laughs> uh, I think you know that by yeah, now. I think, I think that is everything, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just want to say real quick, because I do think this is relatively relevant, this Lego show that we're seeing ads for, this Lego competition show, mm-hmm. I'm kind of excited for. That actually looks awesome. Lego Masters on Fox, I think it's going to be cool. Interesting. Yeah. Also, just uh, very quickly, since we now know the AFC and NFC championship games. True. Green Bay and uh, San Francisco. I'm very torn on this game because San Francisco laid the smackdown on Green Bay last time they played. Mm. That being said... Green Bay really showed me something tonight beating the Seahawks. I'm they, gonna... they got a solid victory tonight. The game is at... San Francisco, I believe. I'm not positive about that. I think San Francisco is the number one seed, though. Um, and then we have so I the will, Titans and Chiefs. Titans and Chiefs. Okay. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna call Packers with that game. I'm gonna stick with the Packers. Um, Titans and Chiefs. Both teams really showed me something uh, this weekend. The Chiefs came out so flat. We were down twenty four nothing, and then came back and dominated. Yeah, Chiefs like the game is at yeah, yeah, yeah. Kansas City, which is a really tough place to play. Titans came out, 
and punched everyone's favorite team, the Baltimore beat, Ravens, in the mouth. Beat the best team in the league I pretty re- handily. I really want Tannehill to win a Super Bowl because it will make Jets fans look really stupid. <laughs> uh, I... Now you're just taunting me. No, I'm not. I'm going <laughs> to give the game to Kansas City, but I will be rooting for the Titans. I would agree with that. Agree with both those picks? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Lewis, you got any takes real quick before we sign off? No, I'm I'm said my piece. All you right. said your piece. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I, I think that's all we've got for tonight, folks. All right, guys. Tune in next week, and uh, we're out. All right.